Big bro, how you doing, sir? Can you hear me all right? I hope so. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening, good evening to everybody. We'll get started here in just a little bit. Everybody doing all right? I am good. They have tried to work me uh, like crazy today, but I'm still good. So thank you for asking. Well, uh, not to belabor the time, uh, as people will hop on as we as we go. But uh, again, thank you all for tuning in on tonight for our Bible study here at the Greater El Bethel Church. Uh, it is my sincere hope and prayer, first of all, that something can be said, that we can take it and strengthen our walk with God, that we may be that much better. Uh, so let us go ahead and pray, and then we'll go higher from there. Uh, Eternal God, our Father, how we thank you for this, another day's journey. God, we thank you for how you blessed us, how you kept us, how you watched over us. God, we thank you just for all that you continuously do, even though we're so undeserving. Now, God, I pray that you would forgive us for all of our unforgiven sins. God, I pray that you would move upon our hearts and our minds that we may be able to have a clear expectation of receiving a word from you. God, I pray that you would touch us and that you would move like only you can through your word, that we may uh, be empowered to understand and know that you are still God and God all by yourself. Bless everyone that's watching. Bless those that may watch later. God, I pray that you would just allow this to be that that you would have it to be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, listen, we're going to, uh, we kind of, Wrapping up the end of the, the year, uh, we are rapidly, man, rapidly approaching the holiday seasons. So we probably, uh, as mentioned before, probably only have maybe a couple of more Wednesdays that we'll have our Bible study, but we're going to make them some good ones. 
because I dare not, I dare not try to compete uh, with the holidays, with everybody, uh, everything that you have going on, especially once we get closer and just in that holiday season. So uh, we would we probably got a couple of more Wednesdays that we'll uh, have Bible study. And then after that, we'll pick back up and start strong at the beginning of the year. Uh, but in any event, there is a lesson for us on tonight. I've already put it there and pinned it over in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and 13 through 17. Uh, our lesson topic for tonight is why we need God's word. Why we need God's word. Uh, the Bible reveals everything we need to be... Got him. Sorry, y'all. I've been trying to catch that mosquito for the longest. <laughs> But the Bible reveals everything we need to live victoriously. Uh, it, it reveals all of that to us. And I am thankful unto God for the privilege of having a relationship with him, first of all. And then next, understanding why we need his word. Now, it should be uh, self-explanatory to uh, a Christian, to those who walk with God and understand. But sometimes we just need a reassurance of knowing why we need God. Uh, <laughs> I know Sister Wright, but it had been flying around. I had to, and it finally got to a spot. <laughs> uh, y'all forgive me, y'all forgive me. Uh, but anyway, uh, why we need God's word, 2 Timothy. Um, the first part of this, uh, it, it's interesting. It, it really points out some things and some really uh, hard hitting things of what we need to know. I'm just going to start reading it right from the start, verses one through five. It says, but know this, hard times will come in the last days for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, demeaning, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, without love for what is good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the form of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid these people. My God, avoid these people. Now, that seems pretty self-explanatory, right? We need to stay away from these type of people. These are people we need to, uh, that that most times that if you learn that they're that way, we typically have a good mindset to say, hey, I need to get away from that. But however, God gives us the ability, gives us the mindset, and gives us the discernment to really be able to pick those people out and understand who those people are. We live in a world that is uh, full of chaos, full of strife, full of trouble, full of all of sin, full of all of these things that's going on around us. As a matter of fact, uh, the example uh, uh, that I've heard not too long ago is, is, I don't know if you've ever been there. I know back in school, uh, we used to have these field trips and used to go and every now and again, you would get there and, and, and it's the symphony. Y'all remember if you ever been to the symphony, you know, when you get to the symphony, uh, when they're warming up, it is chaos. When they're warming up, you hear uh, drums, you hear trumpets, you hear string instruments, you hear all of these things individually. Because all of them are doing something different to warm up. So it just sounds crazy. And all of this stuff is just happening and taking place. Thus the world that we live in. Uh, everything's going crazy. All of these things are happening. However, you ever notice that after, uh, at this point to when the symphony and the or everything is getting ready to get started, when the orchestrator comes out, when he steps up on that podium and he raises his hand and he starts to direct, it turns from chaos to a beautiful sounding uh, rendition of whatever piece of music that they're playing. And when they get to that point and they start playing, it went from chaos to just something that was just beautiful. Well, sometimes we uh, have to 
uh, understand if we're living in a world like that, that's full of chaos, everybody's marching to the beat of their own drum. Everybody's worried about self. Everybody is doing pretty much all of the things that Paul listed out in this particular passage of scripture. It's not until we understand when the real orchestrator stands up and we listen and we adhere to him and we follow him is when we'll start to hear the beautiful, harmonious music that needs to be heard in order for us to live accordingly and how he wants us to live. So we have to understand, first of all, that God is in control, that God is the true conductor. He's the true person. But look, it, it even gives us a more... Uh, it dives even more so into uh, an insight into the current culture, into what we're going through and what's happening. We understand, we see it daily. Sin uh, is is rampant. It abounds in our in our culture. Every time you turn around, it seems like uh, there are sinful acts being uh, openly displayed, openly done. It used to be you wouldn't hear about it and, and something would happen. But nowadays, social media, the news and everything else, when something that is uh, not right, when something that is sinful, guess what? It comes to light immediately. It happens. So we are inundated with it. We're, we're all around it. But even Paul wrote this 2,000 years ago. And even 2,000 years ago, what he wrote, guess what? still stand strong today, still is very applicable today. Look at some of this, look, matter of fact, look at some of the stuff he says. Uh, it, it says, people are self-centered. Look at that one. People are self-centered. They only look out for themselves, only looking out for uh What's in it for me? What's the best thing I, I can get out of it? I, I'm only only concerned about myself. I don't care what nobody else may be doing. I don't care what else uh, nobody else may have going on. They're worried about themselves. So people are self-centered. It even said people are materialistic. It, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, you, you, you find yourselves looking around at all of the things that other people have. And when people get to a place and a point in life where they think, oh, I need to be like them. There are so many people nowadays who are in debt. There are so many people nowadays trying to figure out how to get out of certain loan situations and certain financial problems that they have. Why? Because they went over and beyond their means trying to compete with what somebody else may be doing, trying to compete with your neighbor, trying to compete with your friend. Oh, your neighbor got a new car. Well, I got to go get a new car when knowing good and well, you can't afford a car. So we, people are materialistic. But then watch this. It also says people are arrogant and proud. People are arrogant and proud. A, a simple, if you just go through your social media, if you just scroll through your social media, you'll find news feeds of people who are self-righteous. You'll find news people of people that are, are self-serving and they feel like, oh, I am the, I'm, 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 I, I, I'm what it is. I, I'm, I'm all of that. I'm everything that it needs to be. And they're arrogant and they think that you are beneath them. They think that you don't have the capabilities that they have. So they're proud about all of that. So we have to live in a world like that. We have to live in a world where people are demeaning, irreconcilable, slanderous. Man, they'll drag your name all the way from here to uh, to New York if they wanted to. They will slander your name, but they don't do it like that. They also do it in a brutal manner. They they hold no bars. As a matter of fact, uh, the, some of the biggest fights you ever see are also social media. And I, I'm not talking about, uh, the. I, it's from videos it's from typing it out. It's from all of that. So, social media bullies, they they will talk a good game and they'll be brutal about it. I mean, say some rough stuff. And, or overall, people are just simply unloving. Where is the love? Where has love gone? Where has the caring for one another? Uh, again, just look at social media, how people are treating one another. Uh, watch the television shows that you, you may be pay attention. Watch how it, it's, it's, it's shown and it's manifested and it's given to us. It's pouring, to, it's pouring uh, into our, our, our hearts and our minds and it messes us up. Matter of fact, you have to watch nowadays even what your children are watching. Because some of those shows are pouring into them sinful ways and sinful things 
that we have to be on guard for to make sure that they're not they're, they, they're not being taught those types of things, making sure that they're staying on the straight and narrow, making sure. So the same the same aspect applies to us. We have to be on guard when we're around these people. It even went that far. It says children. Children are disobedient to parents. Lord have mercy. They're disobedient to parents. But not only that, it says parents are abusive to children. There, there, there's a study, you know, they do studies every so year, every so many years. In 2019, the Department of Health did a human, uh, Department of Health and Human Services did a report that it was about 656,000 children in America who were victims of mal, maltreatment. That's a staggering number. That's horrible that even parents, even parents are in sinful ways and doing things and abusive to their children. It's bad when the parents, it's bad when the children are disobedient to the parents, but the parents are doing things that are harmful to the children. It, it that, that, Parents are the ones who are supposed to know better. But he even goes further than that. He, he kept going. Y'all heard the list. It says people are unholy and ungrateful. Unholy and ungrateful. Rather than living in a thankful posture of saying, God, thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for giving me what, 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 what I have because I'm so undeserving. Some people are to the point to where you've gotten unholy and ungrateful and you start to think that you're deserving, you're privileged. You're supposed to have the things that you're having and people that's giving them to you and you become ungrateful and you get to a mindset to where it, it turns from, oh, thank you, God, for all that you've done to, oh, you should have done that for me. No, that, that's not how it's supposed to be. Then, uh, what's another one? What's another? It said, people love pleasures. People love the pleasures of this world more than the pleasures of God. It's the flesh. Flesh and worldly goods. They People want to uh, basically, again, satisfy the flesh, making sure everything that's of the world, in the world, they have it all, they're getting it all. But guess what? They're never satisfied. They're never satisfied. And you, you notice uh, those people who are consistently, uh, uh, that are materialistic, that constantly buy things, that constantly this, that, and the other over and over again. You, they're, they're normally by themselves. They're normally trying to compensate for something else, but they're never satisfied. They're missing something. They're missing the fact that God is uh, uh, the ultimate person. Listen, when I, when I pray for something or if I, if I want something or if I ask God to do something or, or whatever the case may be, uh, I understand that faith without works is dead. I understand that there requires an action for me to do and for me to get uh, to help uh, uh, make sure that I'm showing God I trust you and I believe in you and I think that this is going to happen and, I, and I'm going to act on faith and I'm going to trust you to take me the way that I have to go. I, I, I believe that, but sometimes... Sometimes people, uh, 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 they, 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 they get to a, a thought process of, uh, I got to do it by myself. But when you have the faith and you're trusting God and you allow him, whatever he blesses you with, I guarantee you, if God gave it to you, it's a sense of satisfaction. It's a sense of fulfillment. It's a sense of knowing God helped me get this. And, and then most of all, you'll appreciate it. You will appreciate it. How many, uh, how many, how many, if you, if you just think back, growing up, right now, what you do with your children, how many times have you asked for something from your parents when you was growing up and it wasn't just handed to you? You, you, you had some chores, you had some work to put in, you had to do something uh, to help uh, pretty much show that you wanted whatever it was that you was asking for and you was willing to do the work to get whatever it is that you were asking for. If anybody ever had to go through that, hit, let me see hearts, likes, let me, let me see that because that, that, it, that actually, honestly, I feel like taught us something. Now, granted, 
uh, I, I'll, I'll say it, I'll admit it, I was a spoiled kid. I, granddaddy, grandmama, hey, mama, all of them, I was a spoiled kid. I told you, y'all know, I was a grand, I was a grand, grandkid, the only grandkid for quite some time. So yeah, I was a spoiled kid. However, when I asked for stuff, there was, you know, still a little bit of work that had to be done. And because of that, we learned to appreciate whatever it was that we received because we had put forth an effort. We had put forth the work. We showed that, hey, I want this. And when you got it, it was much different. But 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 unfortunately, some people in their uh, uh, their ungratefulness <laughs> and thinking they're privileged and this, that, and the other, you ever notice when they get things they don't care about? It? They tear it up. They mistreat it. They, it, they, they, it, Next thing you know, it's thrown in the trash because they it the way they got it didn't require anything. Then it even says, even spiritual leaders deceive us. Even spiritual leaders deceive us. It says Paul, Paul was writing about some adversary, adversaries here, and, and he's talking about there are some who act like. Oh, I know who the Lord is and this, that, and the other and all of this. They even speak to say that they claim them, but however, they don't actually do. They don't actually, they don't actually trust God. They don't actually believe in God. There are so many false preachers and false people out there. Uh, now, it don't, don't be deceived. They say some good stuff. Oh, they'll have you, uh, your, your, your heart all pumping and you're feeling all buttery and, and, and butterflies and all that stuff. You'll be feeling all, all good, but you have to stop and say, hey, show me that in the Bible. Show me that in the, show me that in the scripture. And then sometimes uh, the leaders that we trust, they may fail us. They may, they may mess us up. They may lead us astray. Sin in this world is a flourishing thing. It flourishes in our culture. It flourishes in the human race because we are full of sin. But we shouldn't be surprised by it. Paul basically saying that we should not be surprised by it. Uh, we know because we understand hard times will come in the last days. We understand that. We, we And then when you think about the last days, we think, oh, that's when, uh, that, that's when God's going to come in. He's going to call us all. Yeah part of it. But however, every day that we wake up, we're living in last days. Every day that you are, are walking into a sin-filled world, it is the last days. We are at a point to where we have to understand, hey, I am blessed to have another day's journey. I'm blessed to have made it uh, uh, the best that I could through a sin-filled culture. But when we see it, we shouldn't be shocked by it. We shouldn't be shocked because that, that's just the world that we live in. All of these things that we have to endure. But however, uh, the next the next few scriptures, it says, uh, it says, evil people, man, evil people and imposters will become worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believe. You know those who taught you, and you know that from infancy, you have known the sacred scriptures, which are able to give you wisdom for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Evil people are out there. Imposters are out there. And they're going to even become worse. It's going to get worse. Deceiving and being deceived. All, all of these things, people will, will lead you astray. People will try to mess your head up. The devil is crafty. The devil will do everything that he possibly can to make you think, to disrupt your thought process, to pull you away from God. That is his ultimate goal, is to pull you away from God, to suck you down and hold you down to a place to where you completely forget about God and then you find yourself being deceived, living the way that he wants you to live. That, that's just what devil does. That's what he does. Uh, some things we see, uh, they're obviously wrong. They're majorly wrong. We, we, 
outright things that we see, pornography, terrorists, loudmouth bullies, uh, atheists, all of these things, we, we physically see them. We know, we, as soon as you see it, oh, that is wrong. You should not be doing that. That's wrong. But at other times, sometimes it's even more uh, uh, difficult to discern because you can't outright pick it up right then. We got to have God's vision. We got to have his, his revelation of him telling us what's what. Uh, 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 let me give you examples of those that show up that may not be as easily to be seen. Political. Political groups. Uh, you may not be able to see it that well in that. Academia. Even going to school. Some of the things that in the books nowadays, we have to be careful. Uh, cults. And sometimes even our own family. We have to be on guard. We have to uh, and we have to be paying attention. So and that intuition has to be there. They say uh, <laughs> they say a woman's intuition is a powerful thing. And I believe that. I, I believe that. I believe that a woman's intuition is a powerful thing. But 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 sometimes even that. Even that intuition, unless we are depending on God, unless we are asking God to reveal us, to lead and guide us, be a lamp unto our feet that we may not stray, we have to, we have, to have God's intuition to come and God's open, uh, 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 open openness to say, hey, listen, child, that's wrong. <laughs> Child of mine, get away from them. And sometimes it requires that because we, we, we can get caught up. We can get caught up in worldly things. We can get sucked into worldly things. And, and before you know it, you, 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 you've been there for a while trying to figure out how did I get here? And it's not until everything goes left that you, you, you realize how did I even get here? So we have to have God doing what, what's necessary. Paul, he highlighted two crucial ways. Uh, that God's word gives us wisdom to guard against deception. First of all, God's word shows us how to be saved. If you read your Bible, if you're studying, if you're trying to get better in your walk with Christ, and, and when I say read your Bible, I'm not saying on Wednesday, I'm not saying on Sunday. I'm talking about truly reading your Bible. God's going to give you what's necessary. To not fall into divers temptation, not fall into the deception and the things of the craftiness of, of, of what, what's going on. Listen, uh, the scripture, Paul said the scripture uh, where it's able to give you wisdom for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. That's what the that's what the scripture does, gives you wisdom. You may be smart, you may be intelligent, you may be you know, but we, we've all heard the term. There's some educated fools out there too. There's nothing like God's wisdom. There's nothing like him pouring his uh, uh, wisdom and showing us how to be saved. Showing us how to be saved. His word gives us two, two, two truths. It gives us uh, uh, one key truth. It gives us one key truth. It says uh, we should turn from our sins and trust Jesus. Hmm. Turn from our sins and trust Jesus. What do we need to trust him to do? We need to trust him to work on our behalf. When we do that, God will then come in. He'll step in into your heart, into your life and transfer you from the world's biggest stage which it is a big sinful stage. He will transfer you from the world's biggest stage to his very own stage. And when you are on God, when you are in the presence of God, there is nothing like it. When you're under the guidance of God, there is nothing like it. So God's word shows us how to be saved, but it also shows us how to be sanctified. Now, now let's, let's talk about uh, saved versus sanctified. Uh, if you know, you know, God bless you. Amen. But, you know, sometimes people get confused on saved versus sanctified. Saved is describing what happens when we first accept God into our lives. I'm saved. 
God, you rescued me. I accepted you. You accepted me. I'm now your child. It's what happened when we first trust Christ and we become a Christian. That is what saved is. And just, just in case, I mean, you may know, you may not, but there's some who don't, and I want to make sure they understand this. And then uh, uh, we're saved from sin, from our sins at that moment. We're saved at the fact of not dying and going into an eternal fight. That's saved. But then the word sanctified, sanctified tells us what God does for us after we become Christians. Saved is what happens when I become a Christian. Sanctified is what happens after I become a Christian, which means he progressively works on me. He starts to work on me, starts to teach me, starts to help me to become more like Jesus. Saved is what happened when you, as soon as you uh, accepted him. Sanctified is the work that begins on you and in you and through you. After you become a Christian. So saved versus sanctified. So he shows us how to be sanctified. And we all still learning. All still got a long way to go. I don't care if you're a babe in Christ. And you've been there for a while. We are consistently tested. We are consistently tried by the devil. And everybody else. Satan and his imps. And all of those things. So being sanctified is an ongoing thing. It's a constant being, it's a, it's a constant lesson that we're learning constantly over and over. We're building upon each and every day what's already been taught to allow us to be able to help combat those things that come for us. As a matter of fact, there are some things that come at us in our, heart, at our, in our lives that are tough. They are difficult to deal with. But God is sanctifying us. He's building us up. He's helping us. There are some things that we've been through in the past or, or some stuff that's just not that that that, 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 that don't bother us no more. It's because we we're, we're, we're built. We, we have enough sanctification in the bank to say, I ain't worried about that little stuff. He done already brought me through some of that stuff. I know what he's able to do with that. It's a process. It's an ongoing thing. So God's word shows us how to be sanctified. He teaches us. He pours into us. And if we continue to open up our Bibles, we continue to learn, uh, we continue to do. Listen, Paul told Timothy to uh, continue in what you have learned and firmly believe. That, that's what Paul told Timothy. Continue in what you have learned and firmly believe. And when you know God's word, you'll be able to say, hey, come what may. That's why we need God's word. I don't it, come on with it. Because I'm standing on the promises of God. Then the last little part, uh, which is the uh the 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 uh the memory verses that we're given, says all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness. So that a man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Let me give that to you one more time. Let me give it to you one more time. It says, all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness. So that man of God, so that a man of God may be complete, equipped for every, every good work. Why do we need God's word? It equips us for good work. He's equipping us for good work. What makes the Bible uniquely powerful? It is God's word. It is, uh, it is his, it, it's his writing. It's, we, we're, we're taught that all scripture is inspired by God. You may have heard it as it's breathed out by God. You may have heard it as God breathed his word. All of the scripture is of God. All of the scripture is from God. So he pointed out the, the, the he's pointing out the scope of the, the, the effects of scripture and he's teaching us and he's saying uh, it, it, it matures our faith. It, it equips us to live holy, equips us to live those holy lives in a in a world full of sin. 
As a matter of fact, here, here's I'm going to give you these four things to consider, and then we're going to get on out of here. It says, first of all, it talks about how God's word is profitable for teaching. So basically, from the scripture, we learn how to think rightly about God. We learn how to uh, uh, think rightly about God, think rightly about ourselves, and think rightly about others. It's profitable. When you dive in and when you're taught, when you learn those things that you gather, then it's, he said it's also uh, profitable for rebuking. It's like when you see those things are wrong, when you look in a mirror and you see some things that ain't right, we understand God, the scripture shows us how to remove ourselves and help ourselves get away from those sinful things so we don't miss God's mark. Then it says God's word is profitable, profitable for correcting. The, it does not just show us what's wrong. It does not just show us, hey, this is all of the things that's going wrong. This is what you're doing wrong. This, that, and the other. This, don't do this. Don't do this. No, it does not just show us that. It also redirects us to what is right. It redirects us to what is right. And then finally, it's profitable for training. Why? Because it teaches us teaching, rebuking, correcting. It trains us in righteousness. It trains us how to live according the way God wants us to live. So we have to have God's word. We have to have it. Otherwise, we'll be walking around in a chaotic, crazy mess. We'd be falling to divers temptation. We'd be doing all of these sinful things. But because we understand, and I'm praying that you're getting better and knowing and understand why you need God's word, when you start to dive into it, when you start to just take a few moments, nobody's ever said to, hey, you need to sit down and read the Bible at one time from cover to cover. Sometimes you need to read maybe a chapter. Maybe you're good enough to read an entire book of the, of the Bible. Pace yourself. Read. And then stop and ask God to give you a discernment. Well, what I, I don't understand the King James Version. I don't understand. Listen, there are other versions that you can read to help break it down. As a matter of fact, I, I got an app that I can do one side King James. I can do another side NIV. And I can go from back and forth. And I can make, <laughs> make heads and tails of what's being said. But each time we do it, we gather something. God pours into you. God strengthens you in some type of way. So we need God's word, especially in a world that we live in such as today. Amen. Listen, that's the lesson on tonight. We need God's word. And I'm praying day by day that more and more that you would dive into that word. The Bible reveals everything and how to live victoriously. You just have to open it up. We need it. You got to have it. And, and get to know it for yourself. Don't just take a preacher's word. Don't take a deacon's word. Don't take your friend's word. Get to know what he's saying for yourself. And then allow God to break it down even further to you. So that you can be strengthened in your day-to-day -day walk each and every day. Amen. Listen, listen, that's our word. Why we need God's word right there. It's because it's necessary. It's, it's power. And it enlightens us. It strengthens us to go forth. And, and just keep on going and keep on keeping on in a, man, in a rough world that we live. All right, listen, again, thank you all so much for tuning in on tonight. I hope something was said that it has blessed you and kept you uh, throughout uh, throughout this, 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 this session that you can take it and put it in your heart and say, listen, we need God's word. I know I need God's word. And because you need it, dive into it even more so than you've already been doing. And watch God do something miraculous in your life and strengthening you along the way. Uh, all right. Uh, listen, uh, Sunday, this Sunday is the fifth Sunday. It is my hope and prayer. I invite you to come and fellowship with us. If you have not been uh, there, to come and fellowship with us at Greater Bethel at 1130 East 9th Street on Sunday at 10 a.m. We have a wonderful time in the Lord. So I want to extend that invitation to each and every one of you uh, to come and share with us. Let us pray one for another. Keep each other lifted in prayer because we understand prayer changes things. Uh, 
keep uh please keep our musician uh brother stanley glenn his mother in your thoughts and your in, in prayers we've been lifting her up uh we're still continuously lifting her up that god moves we as always want to pray for all of our mothers uh we continue to thank god for their them and the prayers that they do for us each and every day um and i pray for you I pray that God moves upon you, whatever the desire that's needed, whatever there's a desire that's on your heart. If it's pleasing unto God and if it's in God's will, I pray that God grants it to you, that you can know and understand that God loves you. And guess what? He always will love you. And the love that he has, nobody else can match or compare. Uh, all right, listen. Uh, thank you so much again for tuning in. Thank you, uh, Sister Barry. I appreciate all of that to everyone uh, that tuned in on tonight. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, let us pray. Oh, let me, before we go, let's pr continue to pray for Pastor McNeely. Continue to touch his heart, his mind, his body, that he could uh, keep on keeping on and come back and we could see him in church. Amen. All right, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, how we thank you for what you've allowed us to uh, witness and hear on tonight. God, we understand the reinforcement that was given to us of why we need your word. And God, we thank you for not only just pouring out through your word, through your God-breathed word and inspired word to our hearts and our minds, but God, we thank you for everything that you've done for us from day-to-day -day living, from keeping us from danger seen and unseen, just for opening doors, closing doors, and provisions that you make for us day after day that we can have food on our table, roof over our head, clothing on our backs, the activities of our limb, our right frame of mind. God, thank you just for blessing us in spite of. But now, God, as we get ready to leave this virtual space, God, we pray right now that you would touch our hearts and our minds, that as we go into the rest of this week, that we may find time to pick up the word of God and read what it says for ourselves. That not only that, God, equip us, help continue to sanctify us, that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Now, God, keep us and dismiss us and be with us every step of the way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Listen, again, thank y'all so much for tuning in, and I hope again that you was blessed on tonight. See y'all Sunday. You're invited. Come and be with us on Sunday. All right. Have a good rest of your week.